Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pine Phone from Pine64. If you're not familiar with the Pine Phone, this is an open source smartphone supported by all major Linux phone projects. So basically what we have here is an open source Linux powered smartphone and I've been super excited about getting my hands on one of these. It took a little while to ship. I actually pre-ordered this a while ago. And they actually make a few different versions of this, but at the time of ordering, this was the only one available. We have the 2 gigabyte model, and it comes pre-installed with Postmarket OS. But we are able to install any other operating system that's available for the Pine Phone, and at this time, there's actually quite a few. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to receive the Pine Phone itself. This is the model with 2 gigabytes of RAM, but they also make a model with 3 gigabytes of RAM. At the time of ordering this, I could only pick up the 2, so I figured I'd go ahead and get it. We're also going to get a USB Type-C cable and it looks like there's no charger included. Now I do want to mention that this cannot be considered a consumer device, at least not at this time. This was actually released by Pine64 as more of a development platform to make it more accessible and easier to develop these Linux-based phone operating systems. Overall, I mean, it's definitely a plain Jane design. Around back here, we do have a flash and a camera. It connects over USB Type-C. We have a power button and a volume rocker. That's about it on the exterior of this device. So yeah, I've actually been really excited about getting my hands on this device. I've personally been wanting to test a Linux-powered smartphone for a long time, and this one definitely makes it easier and more accessible for everybody to get their hands on it. It's open source, so we can freely flash different operating systems of this, just like we do with single board computers, but now we have a phone form factor. So this one here came pre-installed with Postmarket OS. They're also releasing a Manjaro version, but we can grab that operating system and throw it on this if we ever want to. But in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Postmarket OS. Upon first boot, we do have a little bit of setup we need to do, just like any other new device. I have to throw in a pin code, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's also going to ask me if I want to enable SSH. I do want to enable that so I can access it from a different computer. And finally, it's going to give me the option to fully encrypt the storage on the Pine Phone, and that's a big plus to running Linux on a device like this. And once we're done with that, it's going to start the Postmarka OS installation. You can actually flash this over USB Type-C, or you can flash it using an SD card if you ever need to reinstall an operating system. So taking a look at the specs, this is not high-end by any means. For the CPU, we have the all-winner A64. This is a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU running at 1.2 GHz. The GPU is the Mali 400 MP2. As for RAM, they offer two variants, 2 gigs or 3. It's using LPDDR3 in both. We have another option for storage, 16 gigabytes up to 32. And the display is a 5.95 LCD at 1440 by 720. We do have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0, but unfortunately the Wi-Fi chip in here is only an 802.11b G and N chip, single band, 2.4 GHz, so we can't pick up that 5 GHz network. I am by no means a professional on cellular bands, but on their wiki they do have their LTE, WCDMA, and GSM bands listed. Now I have read in a few posts that your best bet for using this in the US would be on Verizon or Sprint because it's missing some important bands for AT&T and T-Mobile. Like I mentioned, I'm not a professional on this. I actually don't know much about it. I usually buy a phone that's connected to a network to begin with. But all of the bands are listed here on their wiki, and I'll leave a link in the description. Alright, so here we are. I've got everything set up. And one of the main things that I'm worried about with this device is mainly performance. And I know this is a development device. This is not made for the end consumer. But I'm still really worried about it because we're using that very low-end all-winner CPU at 1.2 GHz. So head down to the device and about, should give us a little bit of information. Two gigs of RAM, post-market OS, GNOME desktop, and we'll check for updates. Got one update here for Firefox. I'll go ahead and update it. So far it is feeling a little bit sluggish and I kind of expected this going into it. We're using a very early build of post-market OS here on a low-end all-winner chipset. The screen actually looks really good. It's not a super high-end AMOLED display like Samsung uses, but it's an IPS at 1440 by 720 It'll definitely get you by. Now these phones are going for $150 all the way up to $200 depending on the package that you choose. They have kind of a little starter pack that comes with a few things. And one of the things that I really actually like about this device is the choice in operating systems. There is a ton available right now for the Pine phone, 
and definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will be testing a couple out in a dedicated video. But I do want to personally spend a little time with Postmarket OS because this is what the phone shipped with. So I'll leave this on here for about a week. I'll get used to it. And if my Google Fi SIM card works in this, I'll try to daily drive this for a few days at least. But one thing I did want to try out real quick was the built-in store. This will allow us to download different applications. You can also do it through Terminal, but since we have the store installed, let's see how it looks. I think it's very limited right now, but we should be able to get GIMP, and I just saw it pop up. There we go. We'll try this. I'll install GIMP and see how it works. Not sure how it's going to perform on this small 5.0-inch screen, but uh, let's see if it even installs. This is one of the best open-source image editing applications that you can use on Linux or even Windows. And it looks like it's installing. I'll just give it a second to make sure everything went okay. And I think it should be on our desktop or our app launcher. There we go. Starts up pretty quickly, but as I suspected, this is definitely not optimized for a phone screen. So there's really nothing I can do here without a mouse because I'm not seeing any of my menus to open up a new file or anything like that. We did have an update for Firefox, so I want to see how this performs. I'm actually going to head right over to YouTube and just see if we can get some video playback out of this thing. So it's actually loading up these web pages much faster than I thought it would, given that we only have single band 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi built in. Let's go to my test video here. This is Big Buck Bunny. Don't worry, it's not going to be running in 4K on this. I'm going to set it to as low as we can go, and I believe it's going to be set at 360p from the initial get-go. Go full screen with it. And for some reason, I can't go landscape, so we'll just check it out like it sits here. Get into the settings if I can. There we go. And we're at 360p. Can't turn on stats for nerds. So it does look like it's playing it at 360p. Let me try to skip ahead a bit. And for some reason, this isn't working either. So yeah, the software definitely needs a lot of work, but like I mentioned when we started this video, this is not made for the end consumer, this is made for development. So taking a look at the software releases, it looks like we have Postmarket OS, Ubuntu Touch by Uports, Mobian, uh, Sailfish OS, Pure OS, Fedora, Arch Linux, and Manjaro. So I'd like to swap over to one of these. Let me know in the comments below what operating system you'd like to see running on the Pine phone next, and I'll get one of these installed. Personally, I'm leaning towards Manjaro or Ubuntu by Uports. So I definitely have some more testing to do with the Pine phone, and I'm actually pretty excited because we do have a plethora of different operating systems that we can use on this thing. One thing that I didn't mention about the specs is the 3000 milliamp hour battery. And if we pull the back cover off, you can see that we have these physical kill switches for the modem, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, microphone, rear camera, front camera, and headphones. So you can physically switch these features off through hardware. So first impressions, definitely a little rough around the edges, especially in the software department. Definitely need some optimizations going on. This is for development, not for the end user, but I'm super excited to have my hands on one of these so I can get some more testing done. And like we saw, there's already a lot of operating systems available for the Pine Phone. So if there's a specific distro that you want to see running on the Pine Phone, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.